So yes, AI funding, as you probably know, Don't know has surged, yet. thank you, yeah. Surged quite dramatically up to 2017. Yeah, okay. It's not live, is it? No, it's not okay. live. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll <laughs> so, include everybody else, but no, we're all in this room. So yes, AI funding has surged right. through to 2017, and um, I think we all know Sophia. Big contribution from the Middle East. Has everybody heard Sophia speak? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't need to do that, but you're quite educated there. Um, and also, Boston Dynamics. Those kind of things. AI really, really beginning to have a, a rapid impact on our lives. Um, we've got here the CEO of the Man Group saying AI will invade every corner of Wall Street. So I'll come back to that. Um, as we said earlier, we referenced earlier, uh, since time, Core Combat raised 600 million in China this week. Quite a significant sum. That's with Alibaba. Um, the thing about China is a lot of. <clears throat> The institutions there obviously work with there. yes, same one place. <laughs> yeah, well, either right. here or back. Okay, not here I think I need lines. This is it, right? <laughs> that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so bossy. No, no. So otherwise, it won't work. So cool, cool. Uh, a lot of institutions um, in China obviously work with the state. It's a very, very different regime. And here we have last November, China recruiting Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent to a national AI team. So as we see at the moment, China's dominating AI funding, 48%. And US has gone down to 38%. We see US's share dropping. Um, China's investing heavily in facial recognition technology. This is why it's really so different. They have an overarching infrastructure, as was referred to earlier, which is very much based around facial recognition. Um, AI-related patent publications exploding in China. It really is taking off. The Chinese regulator I spoke to was from AI. He's the only really regulator who was really qualified to speak in AI, AI I think, because he knew that much about it. They had that much experience. Um, this is iSmart, very, very advanced iris scanning technology. They work very closely with Alibaba. Um, this is MegV, again, deep collaboration with Alibaba. If I just see if this will load. Perhaps, no it won't. Okay, don't worry. Um, it basically, this video goes through this guy walking into an office. All his details are scanned, they're all held. There is a, a national identity card scheme, an e-identity card scheme, which is being implemented in, in tier one, two, tier two cities in China, which uses AI, obviously, to put all these elements together. Um, again, here we have a piece of fund management software for Paradigm, being invested in by all of China's major, major banks. So things are happening in fund management, I would say, in China, but most of it is around real life kind of surveillance technology. Um, this is the city brain in, uh, powered by Baidu. So this is improved traffic flow um, by, I can't remember the percentage, I think about 25% improvement in traffic flow in Shanghai. It's now run by AI. So really quite a serious piece of infrastructure. We've got nothing like it outside of China. Um, and now, resultantly, we've got <coughs> CITC, Baidu, launching an AI bank. Again, this is very much on the retail side. We're seeing a lot of retail activity here in the UK as well, all across the MEA. Um, but they've actually launched an AI bank, and that will be using AI, I think about 60% of the staff there are technologists, and we'll use AI to uh, compute, obviously, make credit decisions, etc., etc. Uh, the Chinese regulators are talking about psychographic profiling for credit using AI, a very, very different world there. Um, just looking at the rest of the region, this is Quantum and Australia. Again, they work on the retail side in banking. They work for quite some time to just in retail in general, now they're moving to retail banking. Um, they also have this red marker technology, quite prolific. That uh, is a reg tech. It's all around education for bank employees, but quite wide, wide scale deployment there. Um, this is in Singapore, a product called Synapse, OpenDNA, uh, Psychographics, your fingertips. Moving into banking, again, very much around the retail space. 
but you just see in Asia with these bigger populations, different dynamics, if you think that Shanghai has the same population as, as, as Australia, just one city with a really, really very varied uh, demographic, you can see how much scope there is for really, really good data testing. So we see this across Asia, different kinds of deployment. Uh, coming back here to EMEA, this is the capital markets tech map. Again, very, very busy. Front office, middle mm -hmm. office, back office, risk compliance, current settlement, FS software, AML, KYC, portfolio management. Very, very diverse area we have here. Um, you've probably heard of COIN from JPM. 360,000 hours reduced to three seconds. So that's a, a big AI win, I would say. So this is a, <laughs> I'm not sure, quite sure what it means for <laughs> everybody else. But um, this is 360,000 hours of loan officers and lawyers' time just being condensed to three seconds. You may have heard of the parking ticket AI as well. So 18,000 parking tickets processed within an hour, something like that. And that'll be used to help refugees. So as we know, AI is manifold uses. Um, but big use case here from JPM in the West. <coughs> Again here, Man Group, <coughs> about managing about $12.3 billion using AI. So major strategy of Man Group. It's gone from being an outside piece to now a cornerstone strategy. Um, they say AUM has surged about 77% since the beginning of 2014. And um, the Dimension Fund, one of the AI funds, <laughs> Their assets have quintupled since then. Um, hasn't quite broken forward yet in this space. So AI strategies have struggled to beat the stock market so far on mass. But if you think about how few there are, it does make sense. They're not evenly weighted yet. Um, Bridgewater as well, looking at AI engine to manage the company. This is Two Sigma hedge fund, long since using AI. Um, and here we have Medallion, the secret fund of Renaissance. Mm -hmm. uh, after Trump was elected, I think they took in an additional 1.1 billion. Well, it's, they average about 20% return. A uh, very, very interesting um, AI in investment here, Medallion. I'm sure we'll learn more over the coming years. Um, and then proposal for AI pilot doc by Juan Kronos this week. Do we need it? Maybe yes, maybe no. But it, it's very clear, I think, here in EMEA, a lot of AI is deployed in investment management, a lot of it beginning to arrive around trading, and we have this kind of capability here. Uh, in China, I see a lot of general purpose retail AI, but everything there is being mapped. If you look at the town of Shanxing, uh, everything, all your ID is put into your QR code, you have a digital ID, digital ID card. Um, everything is being mapped. Everything's being run by computers. So I can see AI banking beginning in retail and then moving over towards the commercial sector quite rapidly. So I think we can learn a lot from that market. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about it because we have our own strengths here. I don't know that Chinese banks don't particularly know how to operate here. So I think we can learn from it, but um, I think we'll see a lot coming from there over the next few years. Um, just looking at infrastructures, coming back to Kubernetes, really, really interesting to see what you're doing here, because you're actually managing the process. You're not building it from the ground up. Um, in China, it's quite easy to build from the ground up, because everything runs in sync, if you will. You have the support of the government. The major tech companies and the major banks are all on the same side. Here we have a much more fragmented environment. If you think about the Cloud Act, uh, if you think about the big case for Microsoft, Everyone familiar with that? Briefly, uh, we're waiting for a judgment to be handed down to Microsoft over the uh, custody of the data on the servers, so the sovereign custody. Um, everybody's waiting eagerly for this, wondering what's going to happen to data held on Microsoft servers. <clears throat> if you think about ClearBank, anyone know ClearBank? Yeah. Yeah, so ClearBank is the UK's fifth clearing bank, new one. Uh, it runs on Microsoft Azure, um, incredible technology but it runs on Azure, so therefore its data is kind of captured to Microsoft. So everybody's wondering what was going to happen when the uh, judgment was handed down, but because of the Cloud Act, the judgment's now not been handed down. So there are different implications. 
So looking at the regulatory side, if you follow me, <laughs> looking at the regulatory side, you know, ominous lights going off there. Um, there are many, many different facets to navigate here. Uh, from the regulatory side, number one, the technical side, number two, uh, different <coughs> types of innovation. So managing the process with people who are experienced in this, who exist to manage, I think is the best way to go about it here. Different way that we normally work, um, but it's very, very important, I think, to have a kind of containerized approach and to have management, because if you build from the ground up here, I think you'll be building forever. Okay, so that's what I see in Asia. I've gone very quickly. Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> For a company like Selden, yep. or like any startup to go over there and uh, acquire clients and expand, um, what, how, what, are there any initial blockers, any like trading blockers? Um, apart from the trade war, sorry, yeah. no. Um, I would say yes, there are. Mm. I would want to look, if you're looking at doing business in China, I want to look at how you could complement operations there rather than innovate. So there's a lot happening already. There's a lot of uh, intellectual property being developed already. Mm. How could you complement it? I know I've worked with Chinese leading banks here. They've come to Britain, come to the FCA to learn about regulation. That's one thing they're not too sure of as they move into a more open market. So maybe, I mean, play to your strengths, play to the region's strengths, that's, that's what I would say. Mm. Rather than going in, you may find you're invited into China to do something really amazing and revolutionary. That's what we're getting invited. Right. But I would, be, I would be careful about your intellectual property, and I'd be careful about actually the intention of the Chinese. They may just want to talk to you about what you're doing, which in China is a fair thing to do, and you may, they may be very polite and say it's business, but they may just be interested in starting a long relationship. Mm. Yeah. On intellectual property, I mean, that's one of the things Trump obviously is, is kind of mentioning. But yeah. when you look at things like that, I think Huawei is the single most, uh, it's the largest company in terms of patent applications yes. these days. So, you know, they, they seem to be, I spent a long time living in Japan, following the, the classic sort of development model that Japan and Korea did, which is, don't respect intellectual property until you have your own intellectual property. And Indeed. You change. So do you see that change happening in China? Beginning to, yes. <clears throat> yeah, as, as everything is more and more proven and as it becomes possible to export, yes. Some people here in, in healthcare sell their IP to China deliberately and then it's, mm. it's sold back here. That's the one way of doing it. Certainly, yeah, looking at the slide where the US yeah. is investment share is going down and the area capabilities are, are going up. Yeah, uh, Eric Schmidt said last November we're going to be in a position, if we don't get our act together in the US, we're going to be in a position where the China is going to be leading us on AI. Yeah. So you do see a AI